Thank you very much. My name is Omar Jaju and this is the Chronicle. Welcome to the special interview with the uh, National Associations. I have here Mr. Mohamed Jai. Mohamed is the uh, Secretary General of the Gambia Basketball Association and uh, Mohamed Bite. Uh, Bite is the uh, Vice President of uh, ADMI, uh, the Gambia Swimming Association. So we are here to talk about uh, the impact of COVID-19 on their activities. How is this affecting their athletes and of course their plans, both locally and internationally. Thank you for coming along. I'm starting with you, Mohamed Jai. Uh, welcome to the Chronicle. Thank you. Thank you for it's having me. It's a pleasure having you. Bite, it's a pleasure having you. I think for the first you. time, Mohamed has been sure. with us. But for you, swimming is the first time having you on the Chronicle. It's a pleasure. Sure. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, thank, thank you, you so me. much. So, Mohamed, how has the, the pandemic, I mean, the virus affected your, 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 your activities? Well, uh, thank you for having me once again. I mean, since the uh, virus started, it has been totally a lockdown for basketball mm. because recently we inherited uh, the, the committee, like ex the association from the former GBN executive and then we had a series of plans to revive in reviving basketball in Uganda. Uh, one of them was to bring back high school basketball which is very important in the country and then before we could plan those things uh, the virus started and then kids are no more going to school so everything has to be totally on a lockdown until uh, we get further notice from the national uh, sport Asso national sport council and then right now we're trying to see how best we can prepare ourselves so that as soon as the uh, pandemic is over that the access to go back to the basketball court then we can uh, keep you know, we can start going on with the you know, with our normal activities mm. but then uh, most of these kids uh, our fear is what they are doing apart from basketball and apart from school because basketball is a way of life uh, what we teach is in this case in the basketball court have a, have a long way to go in how they become uh, leaders in our in our society so if kids are not in school if they are not at the basketball court who knows what they'll be doing what about the basketball clubs basketball clubs most of them are not practicing some of these kids cannot stay away uh. because even coaches normally college or are complaining are your kids coming I, I, my kids come in there, so because kids normally call each other so they can meet somewhere mm. just to have a small practice. We keep on flowing them, telling them not to do that because uh, we get orders from the National Sport Council for us to hold basketball until for a notice. Mm. So right now, coaches are already planning, clubs are already planning what they're going to do because maybe very soon the, we will get orders from National Sport Council that we can resume. And if that happens, it will be in the rainy season again. And then, you know, you cannot play basketball in the rainy season yeah. because we don't have indoor arena. And then, but I know you can do a lot of activities in the rainy, in the rainy season so that kids, kids can, or players, athletes can be fully ready and then uh, wait for the October when the official season will start. The financial aspect of it, let's talk about it. How is it affecting you? Do you have any loose is any financial? Yeah, well, in the first place, when we started, uh, when we get into the executive, uh, we were told that uh, our accounts, there is 50,000 there. And then still now, we cannot get those accounts. The, 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 the signatures are not changed. The account still know. Know. You still have some, <laughs> yeah, we still we, have some issues. Yeah, we still have these issues. And then we've been going to the National Sport Council and talking about it, telling them this. We, I, we personally, we, we wrote a letter to the former Secretary General. Uh, for him to facilitate the changing of the signatures in the account so that we can have access to it and know what we can do or know what we have there. Yeah. But he said uh, he did not organize the Congress uh, before, so he had no, he doesn't care what, he refused to take the letter and then said that he doesn't mind, he doesn't know what to do with the account. So it's, not, it's up to National Sport Council to facilitate the change of the signature, which is very wrong, I don't know. Where does that happen in, in the world? When you are when you are a signatory in that in that account, in that particular account, when you have to facilitate the change of signatory, and then you said no, you cannot do that because you are not you are you are not the one who organized it. Congress that was organized by the it was organized by National Sport Council yeah. and things like that. So we also we we, we told Marcel and then uh, Seca at the National Sport Council they have been trying to reach him to see how best we can agree and then change this. I think, I think Seca and Marcel have some questions to answer, which yeah. can be of yeah. a, a lot yeah. of discussion. Uh, but just to, to stay uh, 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 focused on our point of discussion today mm -hmm. is uh, 
uh, when you come to that, I mean, your plans that you are doing, and of course, the way that you're monitoring your players during these difficult times. Mm -hmm. But uh, we will come back to you later as, mm -hmm. as the interview goes on. Let's talk to Bite Mohamed. Uh, swimming, yeah, it's a uh, water thing. Now everything is dry. Uh, but first of all, how has this impacted your activities? Well, um, first I would like to start by saying um, I'm very happy to be here. It is the first time to be here, but and, and it's great to be here. So um, to start with, I will want to start with the first one, the first major event that we are supposed to um, take part in. Uh, that is the um, Olympic Games. So it was supposed to be this year, and because of the pandemic, it has been uh, postponed till next year. Um, that's one of the major events uh, we should have participated in, and it's not going to be possible till next year. Uh, the second one is um, the Ghana Swimming Championship for all African countries. Um, we are supposed to participate in that one in this year also, but it's not going to be possible because of the pandemic. Uh, the third one is the um, Zone 2 Junior Championship, which was supposed to be held in um, Guinea. Um, likewise, the same thing. There is even a chance that for that particular event is even going to be cancelled. Mm -hmm. right? So then... Um, there is a fourth one, international event, which is the um, Dakar Gore Open Water Swimming Championship. Usually we use this um, competition as a way of, you know, uh, identifying uh, potential swimmers that we have, uh, that we identify during our regional competitions. So um, that will bring a little bit of hindrance for us, but notwithstanding, we hope that next year we'll get something from that. Um, because I'm not, sure sh I'm not sure whether they will hold the event this year. Then um, coming now to the, the national events that we organize ourselves, uh, the first one is um, the regional competition. So usually we, held, we hold three um, different regional competitions and uh, this time around we wanted to move to the Funis and have one there. Yeah. But um, because of the pandemic we are thinking of um, postponing the event till next year and we'll start with Funi next year. Then a year, a year later, we want to go to the region around for Kenya. So that's the plan for that. So basically, for that event, it's not going to be possible this year. Uh, the other one is the National Open Water Swimming Championship, which actually depends on the Regional Open Water Swimming Championships because we take the best from all the regions to compete in the National Open Water. But that event too will not be possible because the Regional is not, will not hold. Then uh, we have the last one, which is the National Swimming Championship. Usually we do this at Q-City. Um, we are not so sure, sure whether we'll have it or not, because it depends um, on when we'll be allowed to use the pools. All these events are this year. Exactly, all these events are this year. So, um, so basically, that's, 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 that's the thing right now. So all the events that we're supposed to participate in or that we're supposed to organize this year, None of them will most likely take place. You have two, two athletes, uh, two swimmers in the car training sure. at the High Performance Center, Modlamin and Raima. Uh, as an association, how are you monitoring their, their, their fitness level during this, during this lockdown period? Well, um, what happens is uh, before the, the lockdown, um, the athletes were training regularly and um, the, the reports of their performance were sent to us regularly. Um, but now during the pandemic, there are no more um, trading news in the pool. Yeah. So they are not allowed to use the other facilities um, at the high performance center. Yeah. So therefore, all that they're doing is just um, dry line training. They're just training in their, in their rooms. So uh, meaning basically uh, the level of fitness that they had before will definitely go down. Yeah. Uh, Mohamed, uh, you don't have, let's say, uh, many clubs basketball clubs, looking at the history and even where you picked it from, I mean your executive, basketball was kind of dead mm -hmm. in this country and your executive is here and you promised to revive the game. Uh, how far are you in your reviving process? Now you have this pandemic in, mm -hmm. how is it going to do with you in your reviving process? Yeah, when we, when, when, when we uh, before the pandemic we started uh, a basketball tour, uh, going visiting clubs that are already existing. And then uh, all the clubs that are presently play in the, presently registered with GBA, we already visited them, and then we had a uh, full full conversation with the teams, manage, team management, and then the athletes. And then we are supposed to go to uh, Elara, uh, to all these regions, up to Base, because they also have basketball teams. And then we are trying to see how best we can uh, get them to be part of the to the uh, to be part of the league too. 
uh, and then uh, also to have our regional tournament, which is very important because most of the time people are saying that basketball is only centered between Ipirkama and Banjo, which is wrong. There are teams in, in, in Jarasoma with Injai and then in Basel, yeah, yeah. yeah, they are doing very well. So we want to make sure that this time they 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 all part of it. And then, one, but the most important thing, because that's where athletes move from to to big clubs and then to maybe to universities. That that's the high school basketball. In all these countries that we go to, we have high school basketball. It's the most important thing. So we're gonna make sure that one we start it as soon as school resume. Uh, maybe around in next 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 school semester, and then. Uh, make sure that uh, it involves all the high schools in the in the country, and it will be difficult because some of these high schools don't have basketball courts. Some of these high schools don't even have coaches uh, in those high schools. But then there are former basketball players who might be interested in going to volunteer and then help other schools by training these uh, these these teams and then to make sure that they can come and uh, uh, participate in this uh, national high school championship. Let's talk about the post COVID nineteen era. Do you have any plans as an association when the pandemic is gone? I don't know where it is going, but it will go, I know. Yeah. When it is gone, what plans do you have to make sure that basketball develops yeah, after you overcome this, uh, this, this problem? Maybe it will be, we are thinking that maybe it will be around August. Maybe maybe around August they will allow us to, uh, to go back to the basketball club. But that, that, that what we want to do is finish our tour by going to the regions and then meet with the teams, meet with the team management and then talk to them about what we want to do. Uh, this summer we are planning on having a test game, international test game with Guinea-Bissau, Mali and Senegal. We are planning to, to create, we wanted to create a local based team that will go to, all, go to these three countries, play so, the, so Africa that we are, Gambia is happy to have basketball and then Gambia is coming. I don't know when, but it's coming. So we, we also going to be recognized in Africa and then in the world. So we wanted to do that, uh, but then the pandemic came, so we have to... So if there is more time before, maybe before our official league opens, and then, or maybe before basketball resume in Africa, then we'll be able to do that. Because there are amazing players here that are even doing their individual practice every day, uh, waiting for opportunities like this for them to represent their country. When are you targeting during the resumption, for the resumption of the, of the league, national league? October. Yeah, because we want to do it with the uh, NBA, how the NBA goes, like we start in October and then finish it early so that we can have other championships, uh, other, tro other tournaments, like the, the President's tro Trophy that we want to do, yeah. and then uh, the camps that we want to do during the summer, yeah. because we are also uh, trying to get in touch with all these basketball players in uh, abroad, for them to, at least, if they can represent the Gambia, we will bring them on board. If, they can also come to the Gambia and then do camps yeah, that will inspire other athletes here, especially girls. Uh, so we're trying to get in touch with them and then do this very well. Right now we have our basketball ambassador in America, who is Usman Salah. He also is doing very well trying to get in touch with uh, people that might be able to help us in the future, like sponsors. And then, but our main problem, it, all these things will have been possible if we have an arena. Basketball court. Yeah. A basket, like maybe 10,000 seat arena that can that we can if, with or without if rainy season we can play and then we can be able to host international teams in the country so that one also is, of, is part of our main focus to try to uh, get a place that we can look for people to support and then build a basketball arena but government are you are you going to government um, ministry uh, we're gonna go there <laughs> bj uh, post COVID-19 era it's, it's the most critical, it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the crucial point now, let's talk about it. Uh, do you have any plans of uh, facing the realities after COVID-19? Well, yes. Um, so first I would like to say, um, for us basically, we're not affected that much, or we're not affected that much with regards to the, um, okay. the COVID-19. First I will start by saying we are not a revenue generating um, association or federation so because of that um, that part will not really affect us um, like it is affecting um, um, example let's say um, the international clubs yeah, example in football 
So uh, on that bit, we are not going to be affected. But um, on the areas that we will be affected will be, for instance, um, like you mentioned earlier, two of our athletes are currently in Dakar um, training at a very high performance center uh, with lots of facilities to use. And um, um, they got the opportunity to go to Dakar through scholarship from FINA, that is the World Governing Body of Swimming. Um, however, their scholarships were supposed to end right before the Olympic Games starts. So um, now, technically, their, their, their scholarships have ended, yeah. right? And um, they're supposed to be back in Gambia. So the, the concern that we have for now is when they're here and we don't have the opportunity for them to go back there again, then it means they will have to do with what we have here. And um, uh, frankly speaking, um, the, the, the standard um, that the Olympic, that, that the pool in Dakar have, that is the Piscine Olympic, we definitely do not have that here. And the other facilities that they have access to, we will not have access um, to that here. So that is going to be um, a challenge for us. Um, the other challenges, uh, a little bit, will be the events that we are trying to hold or the extensions that we are trying to do. Um, so it means it's going to be delayed a little bit, but that will, that's going to be very normal because um, the, the pandemic have changed um, everything. So everything that was abnormal is now normal. Right. Yes. But the challenges in swimming, I mean, the development for swimming, I mean, it includes infrastructure. Uh, you mentioned earlier <coughs> that uh, we don't have a standard swimming pool, let's say a uh, 50 meter pool, an Olympic standard pool. Sure. What we have here is maybe a 25 meter pool at the Q City where your, your, your swimmers do train. Sure. How important do you think is having a swimming pool in a country like Gambia where you have all the uh, swimmers ready to qualify for major events? Uh, so l let's say I will start by saying so because of the fact that we don't have a pool so and we are not financially um, strong or capable um, so one of the problems that we are faced with is sometimes pay because uh, the, the pool that we use we hire the pool so um, Sometimes the problem that we're faced with is um, having the resources to be able to continually finance um, uh, finance our activities or to pay for the pool. So that's a big challenge. And the second one um, is that uh, well, that maybe that place or um, nearby they have um, other facilities that we can use. Example, gym. But it's going to be much expensive if we have to um, hire the pool and um, and pay to use the facilities. So therefore, um, having um, these facilities, um, that is the pool, and um, the other facilities like the gym, uh, will definitely help um, swimming as, as, as an association because it will help to, um, to, to better identify the swimmers we need and we can have access to the pool every time we want. Um, uh, so um, the, the pool at Q City, we just use it for four days a week right and uh, that's once a day and normally what is recommended is for us to use it twice a day and at least five times a week How so, much do you pay uh, well um uh, i i guess i will leave that i, I will not i will not i will not mention that here okay. yeah but um well we are we're struggling and um we we just wish and hope we can have our own pool with um our own facilities uh, very good facilities like uh, the one that they have in um, Piscine Olympic or even better if we can have it. Otherwise, um, we, will, we, we will continue to struggle for a longer period of time. Open water, it's, it's, it's also possible in the Gambia. How, how is your association making best use of the, of the, of the river? Well, um, for open water, that one is not a big problem because everyone have access to the water. Right, um, most of our um, athletes, right, the very good ones, um, they're from Tanje or from Bakau. So, and they have access. And Bara, you used to have good swimmers from Yes, Bara. we have we have good, very good swimmers from Bara too. But um, recently, the ones that we have from Tanje and Bakau, um, in terms of speed, they they they're really faster than the ones from Bara. Mm. But generally, these are the three places that we have these athletes from. And and for for those that are doing open water it's not a problem because they always have access to the water and um, usually they will have someone to help them train. Yeah. Sure. The GNOC, which your association is an affiliate with, uh, received a really package from the IOC and from ANUC, two associations. 
did you receive any support from the NOC? Well, as it now, not, we did not receive anything yet. So maybe they will contact us later. Why not? As of now, we did not receive any communication from them. What, what, what support are you looking for to receiving from the NOC in this, in this trying time? Um, well, generally, um, I would say I will start by saying sometimes, in order to participate in some of these competitions, we struggle a lot. Um, getting air tickets for our athletes or the rooms to pay for it's it's one big um, problem because it's really expensive. So um, to be specific, that will be difficult. Uh, whatever amount we get from them, that will be great. So as long as we can keep it, and when the events come, we can participate in all of those events, that will be great. Because what, what usually happens is, usually when we go to events, we just go with one athlete, right? That is because we are financially constrained. So if that was not the case, we would have been able to take up to four athletes. We would have, we, we have been able to participate in relay events. But um, swimming have never participated in relay events because uh, we are not financially there. And the support that we receive, well, it's, it's okay, but it's not much. Sure. All right. Uh, Mohamed, I'm going to ask you the same question now. The relief package from the IOC. IOC is the International Olympic Committee. Yeah, yeah. And ANOC, uh, it's for the associations. I mean, it's across everywhere. FIFA is doing the same thing with football and CAF also is doing the same thing with football. And the IOC is saying our NOCs can't be left behind. We are also supporting them for them to support the associations. Mm -hmm. Do you receive any support from the, uh, the yeah, NOC? No. Not, not yet. Uh, maybe uh, they will contact us later. I, I don't know. Yet. But what happened with uh, us and uh, the NOC is after we, we sent them a letter introducing ourselves as a new executive, and then recently they replied us that uh, we need to. I think they didn't uh, get the report from the NSC, National Sport Council, that there was an extraordinary congress that took place in, in November. And then these are the new executives, so they are saying that they also need a letter from FIBA for them to update their database that we are the new executive. It has never happened like that before. And I know uh, we, we already wrote another letter that will be sent to them maybe tomorrow. Uh, so I know they will update uh, their database that we are the new executive and then also uh, help us uh, also write to FIBA because normally that's what uh, they should be the people doing it, like NOC should write to FIBA, so write to FIBA that there is a new executive in the game for basketball and these are the executives, so FIBA also will update their database. So it's not the other way around, like FIBA writing for us. So you are yet to be an affiliate to the international body? Yes. <laughs> but this is, this is so funny, huh? I mean, I mean we don't, we, even us, we don't understand what is going on right now, because... What is the sports council doing about I mean, we... As of now, we don't know, because... What we, did they tell you that they are doing? They keep on saying that they're going to contact the NOC about it, and then we don't know yet. So we already wrote a letter that will be sent to them tomorrow again to the National Sport Council for them to just to make a flow up, for them to write to the GNOC about this. So maybe they the, the international body, I mean the, the FIBA, mm -hmm. realize your existence. I mean, as a new body. Yeah. Uh, it has to be, they will know it if the national, if the GNOC write to them. Did they know it now? Uh, we don't know yet. We don't know yet. But everything that was going on in the country here about basketball, the, the, the FIBA, they know it because we have been sending them letters too about what we have. You've been exchanging correspondence? N not exchanging correspondence, but we have been informing them about everything. That How do you inform them? Yeah, we normally write to the Secretary General and then. Nationally? Yeah, not from, from, from the coaches committee before uh, everything that was going on we normally copy them uh, I like think I, this requires a, a bigger debate a bigger discussion with the sports council I don't want to uh, bore you with a uh, lot of relevant questions regarding to this matter it's more of an administration and, uh, but uh, basketball uh, we've seen gaming players playing in the NBA uh, most of them uh, recently we've seen uh, another young passionate and very good Basketball players, Satu. Satu, yeah. Uh, do you communicate with them, these players that are outside? Yeah, we, we have started that already. We haven't reached Satu yet. But for Dennis Kruder, uh, our basketball ambassador in the States have been trying to reach him also. 
for Soto right now, you know, she, she, she just got dra drafted in, in the NBA, in the double NBA, uh, and then with the only lockdown, and then she's also doing going on going with schooling also online. Mm. So things are a little bit tight with her, uh, but we know very soon we will be in touch with her because her family is in Bakau here, and then he she used to play basketball at the stadium here. So we we not really having a big problem with that because. You know, as as now the time is right, everything will work smoothly with all these basketball players abroad. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And now, also the sports council is a body responsible for uh, regulating youth associations in this country. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you catch the level of support, support, um, assistance, and uh, supporting associations? Yeah. To be honest, for us with this problem with. Uh, GNOC and then our accounts and, and, and every other problem that is going to be for first we will see that they haven't really given us the necessary support that they should you know because we will go in there talking to them they have sent send letters I mean, we don't know what's what's going on maybe it's because of the pandemic and then most of them were not working so we are just hoping that maybe very soon they will make facilitate this and then especially our accounts because you know, Gambia, when it comes to money, it's always a problem. And then we don't want to inherit an association where young kids will go and sit somewhere asking us where is our money. Because they said they only left, they only left 50,000. 50,000 is small. Just go to the bank and then uh, ask the bank to change the signatures because you are no more there and then there's an executive. Those things are very simple yeah. and it's the right thing to do. So if you don't do it and then expect us to expect National Support Council who have no no mandate to the national sports who have no right in, in, in those accounts to do it to do that it's crazy and then the national sports council who should also tell them that go and do this yeah. they are not doing it so yeah. we don't really know what's going on yeah. and then uh, this thing will change for so sure. and then because basketball is in our hearts and we are not doing it for ourselves there are a lot of young people i mean if if the corona was wasn't going on now if you come here you see a lot of kids yeah. at the basketball court so this game is bigger than one individual one is bigger than it's, it's for the Gambia so a lot of kids are involved so whatever we are doing let us do the right thing and then make sure that that money don't come between you know at least and then the executive and things like that because we also after one time we're gonna leave and then do something else somebody else somebody will also come and then take over so let us make sure we do the right thing but we don't want to change like open a new account and then if another executive comes we also have to open a new account then it's like people are using basketball or people are using assistance just to gain money, which is not right. Mm. I mean, so hopefully National Sports Council, if they are, if they are listening, if, if they hear this message, hopefully they will do what they have to do and then sort this out. I hope so. You're watching the special interview and with uh, officials from the Gambia Swimming Association, Mohamed Bite and uh, Mohamed Jai is the Secretary General of the Gambia Basketball Association. So we are wrapping this up very soon. Uh, Bite. Uh, Let's talk about your relationship with the Sports Council. You know their mandate, they are here to regulate you, the associations, to say, hey, swimming, you are not doing this, do that. How supportive are they to, to you, and what is your relationship with the Sports Council? I mean, again, the swimming. Well, um, with the Sports Council, usually anytime we have an issue or we have a problem, we just um, talk to them and um, seek their advice, or we need support, we can we usually also contact them. But um, as you know, they're also constrained. So usually they're faced with some of these problems. Um, so um, so the only thing that, that was a bit of a concern for me the last time was um, they, they, they wanted to organize an event. Um, I think that was last year or year before. But unfortunately, it was not possible for whatever reason when um, we have been guided for more than once for a meeting. So I think it's important if such things happen and we are on the side waiting and we also want to organize our own thing um, along the way. So they should write to us to inform us that um, this is not going to be possible. So you so, the sports council, we are planning to organize an event? Yes. What event? Um, it was some sort of um, what all sport games, so something like that, okay. um, that will involve you know, the entire country, all the regions. And it was a brilliant idea, but unfortunately, it did not happen. Um, 
So it, it will be nice to hear from them what, what, what they have to say so about that. they engage to you? Do you want to know swimming? Uh, particularly, no. We, we did not receive anything from them. Okay. Um, no communication at whatsoever. But uh, usually, like I said, when we need advice, we usually co um, contact them for advice. And we, we hope that relation continues with okay. sure. Finally, what will be your last words, your message to, to the your swimmers and of course to, to, the, sporting, to the sporting fraternity? Well, um, before that, I will start by saying I'm still pleading to um, the government of the Gambia to help us with a swimming pool and uh, with the other required facilities um, that we need for the swimming pool. We definitely need that because without it, our swimmers will continue to, to suffer. We usually identify very good swimmers, but the, the problem is having that very good facility that we can use you know, to, um, to, to come up with quality um, athletes. Um, secondly, uh, the message I have for our athletes is let them um, let, 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 let them try to socially distance them from them, them themselves from everyone else, and continue to train like they do earlier, and um, not engage in other activities that are not um, legal or morally right. Um, finally, to uh, our fellow associations in the Gambia, um, we definitely know it's not easy. Right, it's a voluntary walk. Uh, sometimes people don't understand why even you do it. Why do you do this walk when you don't get paid? Right, you, you're doing something that is way better than this. Why are you wasting your time in this? But that's not the point. The, the point is the love for, for, for the Gambia, the love for the country, and to see that development takes place in that particular discipline that you're in. So we hope um, the, the others in the other associations will also persevere, do their best to see um, whatever they're doing, they do not give up. Even they're having, um, even other people are, even if other people are discouraging them, let them not give up and keep on pushing. Um, we will surely get there. When we don't know, but we believe we will surely get there. Mohamed Bite of uh, Gambia Swimming Association. Thank you very much, Mohamed Jai. We are wrapping up. Uh, what final message do you have to those that are watching you now and to the basketball players, especially the young ones coming up? Yeah. I mean, first of all, to the basketball players, I just want to tell them uh, to continue staying away from the basketball courts because uh, this pandemic is, is not what we want. It's not the GBA telling them not to go there, but it's an order from the NSC. And the National Sport Council is, is above all of us. The National Sport Council is, is, the, is, the, is the body responsible uh, for this. And then if they ask us not to go to the basketball, let us stay away. And then the other thing that I want to say to Gambians, especially to the government. I just wish and pray that they know the importance of sports in this country, how sport can change the lives of young people. I mean, if so many young people are, are on the stage doing things that are not good for our society, it's because they don't have sports where they are, it's because they are not motivated. Like, uh, for example, uh, you see some of these athletes will come to, will be playing basketball at a, at, a, at a higher level here in the Gambia, and then they will go to their coaches begging for transportation or make money to buy shoes. All these things is happening because sport is not really managed or sport is not really giving the, 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 the opportunity to, to, to change the lives of young people in this country. So I'm urging the government, uh, the Ministry of Veterans Sport, let, us, let them support these organizations, associations and then also the National Sport Council, let them also keep on doing what they are doing and then also look at basketball because we really we are, not, we are in a really hard time right now. So, thank you. Mohamed Jai is the Secretary General of the Gambia Basketball Association and uh, Mohamed uh, Bite, uh, Vice President, Technical and Admin of the Gambia Swimming Association. My name is Omar Jai and this is a Chronicle. Thank you so much for watching.